Jiriki, Hua Hua, uh, uh, Deeds with Makare, uh, uh, Rowan, and I'm in my favorite t-shirt. I made this. You can't find these anywhere, especially now. Uh, it's probably going to be hard to make them, too, because the, uh, the, the little flocking design that I ironed on uh, adjusted this from. It's, um, it's been discontinued, I believe. At least it's no longer available at Joanne. I'm sure you could find something similar enough anyway. Hi, kitty. I've got an annoying kitty who always likes to be up my ass. Don't you? Yes, you do. Oh, I... Okay. Please scooch. Okay. Now I need you to scooch. Thank you. Oh, hey. Okay, so... I... Uh, I don't know. I just felt like shooting a video, and I've got a few things that I, um... Uh, could probably stand to, uh, show off, because I've acquired them in the very recent. So... Ah... Uh, Let's see, first would be, uh, free books I got at the library, and I know I just, uh, donated and sold and gave away a bunch, including, let's see, this one book about French food culture that I, um, sent off to my friend Adrian, and I also found a book about, um, um, um oh yeah, like one of those, uh, little, um, books to, uh, learn French, so like a French language course book. Oh crap, I forget the title of it, but the, uh, the subtitle was like, uh, the, uh, the everyday French that, that classrooms never teach or something like that, and so it has a whole bunch of things like, um, French swearing and a lot of French, um, informal phrases and some slang that, um, was in common use, at least in the mid-80s when the book existed, or was written, <laughs> and it had a whole chapter on the way that the French gesticulate with their hands, or gesticulate, is that the word? Uh, you know, like, just make all these grand gestures when talking with, when talking and using their hands and everything, so, uh, and yeah, it had a whole chapter dedicated to that, so I really hope she enjoys that, and, uh, so, yeah, I know, like I said, I just gave away and sold um, a whole lot of books. Probably if I were to, um, if I were to put them all on a shelf, it would probably take up most of that shelf, which has, um, that one. The one, um, can we see it here? Uh, it's a little bit hidden. So, okay, there's that shelf, and then there's the one underneath it, and those are both, um, uh, peach crates that used to have records on them, and then there's a shelf underneath the peach crates, and it's your basic shelf. I think it's something like 24 inches across. All the books that I gave away and sold, those those would probably fill up most of that shelf. So this is my problem with acquiring books. <laughs> On the good side, I'm not quite a hoarder. Definitely not a disordered hoarder. I understand where some of the language policing, I, I can't really think of a better term for it right now, like, so, like, there's a difference between, like, feeling anxious every once in a while and having an anxiety disorder, like, a person can feel anxious and therefore have anxiety every once in a while and it doesn't, uh, but it's not to a disordered degree, and that is fine, that is a thing that happens, but, uh, when you have a disorder, uh, when you have dis an anxiety disorder, you are feeling anxious far more regularly than the average person, and it is impacting your life and making various tasks hard to accomplish, like, you know, an adult is expected to, but yeah, so it's like, yeah, my dad was a bit of a hoarder, but not to a disordered extent, I think in part because at least my mother and my stepmother were able to reel it in on him, and if they noticed he wasn't giving away or selling things as soon as he initially promised he would, like, they would get on his ass, and he'd be like, and somehow they were able to get through to him, because nobody else in the world could, but they were able to get through to him that, like, that he needed to get rid of some shit, so I've probably picked up that habit a bit, but it's nowhere near disordered levels. So, um, on the free shelf, I picked up three books from the library, so I've got The Collected Stories of Colette. So yeah, Colette was one of those writers that I tried to get really into when I was in high school, but ultimately I was more into the notion of being into her writing than I was into her writing, so I figure I'll give her another go, and it was free. So, okay, from the introduction, essentially Colette was a lyric poet, and her basic subject matter was not the world 
she described so reverently, but the drama of her personal relation to the world. Her injunction to those around her was always look, and her own capacity to behold was acute and untiring. But when she is writing at her best, it is not what she describes so much as her own presence, the dramatic act of herself watching, say, a butterfly, which becomes so absorbing, morally exemplary, and memorable. This is no accident, for the very delicate art of using the first person without indulgence is one that Colette developed as thoroughly and as consciously as Joyce explored the art of eschewing it. So, yeah, I'm going to give her another go and hopefully, like, actually get into her. If not, I think, I don't know, is she one of the writers that, is she one of the French writers? Well, I mean, she is a French writer, but I can't remember if Adrienne's into her. If not, you know, I'll be like, here's an introductory book. Um, and if she can't get into it, um, then I'm sure she'll find somebody else to um, pass it on to. And thus, the cycle of books. And speaking of James Joyce, I picked up two, um, including Ulysses, which is one of those books that everybody, especially every Irish person, either has read or intends to read. And now I have no excuse not to read it. Um, this, this is a vintage copy. What the shit? Oh, this was probably at Don Treader at one time. I'd say it was $12. I'm guessing it was at Don Treader at one time because that's the handwriting of one of their, uh, or, or at least it's very close to the handwriting of one of their, um, one of their buyers, I believe. Uh, I think one of the co-owners. Okay, vintage books, so... Okay, this edition, corrected and reset, 1961. So, oh wow, this is a... This is beautiful condition for a 1961 printing. Oh, wait, wait, no, no, no. That would... Because 795, that is not 1961 pricing. So when was this one printed? Okay, this edition, corrected and reset, 1961. When the hell was this edition printed. This is what I want to know. Because, yeah, like, 19, or 795 is not 1961 pricing. Manufactured in the United States, all rights reserved under international and American copyright conventions. Because of many scholars, no such referred to the 1934 first American edition. This edition of Ulysses indicates in the margins of the page numbers of that edition. These are placed next to the line which contains... Okay, maybe this is a 61 printing. Has it always been obscenely expensive? Because I'm not finding an ISBN number. That would be the, um... Is that one? I don't know. So this is some kind of cataloging number. I... Uh, yeah, if it's an ISBN, it almost always says ISBN prior the number. So this is some kind of cataloging number. I'm not sure what, but there's no ISBN in this edition. So maybe this is a 61 copy, because that would have been before ISBNs. So, let's see, 30-something... Okay, here's the text. Uh, I don't know. This may indeed be a 1961 printing, and it was just always obscenely expensive. On the back here, it, an entirely reset in 1961, so... Yeah, this would be either a 61 or maybe 62 printing. Okay, wow. What the hell? Sure. Ulysses is now available for the first time in paperback, also available in hardcover edition from Random House. Yeah, yeah, this is, this is indeed an old print. Yeah. I was not expecting that. <laughs> wow, I just, because the, um, well, the gradient here, I mean, granted, this was, a, uh, you know, this was something that they were able to do in the 60s, but you often see these in prints from, in, a. Uh, uh, printings from the 80s. You often see this kind of thing. And plus, this um, this cover design for Ulysses has been in... I know this was in use in the 80s and 90s. So, yeah, no ISBN. My guess is it probably is a 1960s printing of... Right, kitty? Right? That's would be why it was $12 a ton treader then. <laughs> Oh, and here's another vintage James Joyce, the portrait of an, the artist as a young man. Hi! She's on my knee. Uh, 
This one somebody wrote all over. Well, not all over, but it was... Uh, whoa, I just noticed this this date stamp on here. April 29th, 1968. Hi, Murnau. He's on the other side of Phoebe. And this is another one without an ISBN. But I also can tell from the, uh, the fonts used here, this would probably be a uh, 1950s or 60s printing. Third printing, 1965. That make, that's in line with the font. So, yeah, the font I was thinking, 50s, early 60s. So, yeah, this was a 65 printing. <laughs> I love how I, I'm down... I'm able to, like, gauge what came out of the approximate span of years just based on the fonts and a lot of things. I love that... This is, like, this is one of my superpowers. I can date... I can date many old movies, commercials, TV shows, um, and I'm usually, um, if I'm off, it's usually by only about five years in one direction or another, so either I've guessed five years later or five years earlier, and usually I just take a, take a good guess, and I'm often right, um, just looking at the fonts and the opening credits, it's, it's not a very useful superpower. It doesn't come in very handy very often, but every once in a while I'm looking through stuff on the Digital Archive website and there's no date in there, so I've been talking a lot about this video series on genes that um, I actually like made a really um, sarcastic little tweet earlier today about how one of the reasons I've been putting it off is because I go... I, I can get obsessive about my laundry, and I will lose respect for people based on their hangers. And <laughs> because it makes sense that if you're going to talk about uh, an item of clothing that you're fairly... I don't know. I wouldn't say I'm necessarily passionate about jeans, but it's occurred to me um, that it's an overwhelming majority of what I wear. Like, even my, even my best ex, Scott, he will, he will mix it up with, uh, I mean, granted, they're black, uh, he, he never wears, like, you know, blue or khaki colored, but, like, he'll wear, like, um, like, black, um, docker khakis, or I think it's Dickies that makes the ones in black that he likes, but yeah, he'll wear, like, you know, the, uh, the black dockers or Dickies, um, khakis, slacks, um, as much as he wears jeans, he does have one pair of blue jeans, um, but he's got a few pairs of black ones, and I've got a lot of friends who only have, like, like, maybe four or five pairs of jeans tops. I have, a, I have around two dozen pairs of jeans. Like, I love my denim. I realized, uh, earlier this year that I have been wearing jeans as my primary um, as my primary bottoms, you know, for clothing. Every once in a while, if I'm going to the club, I'll mix it up with a skirt. Actually, like, I wear skirts to the club a lot. Um, I've been wearing jeans out to the clubs a lot lately, and sometimes I just am in the mood for jeans, and I have so many pairs of jeans, and so, yeah, when I get around to that, uh, video series... But yeah, it just makes sense that the first video in that series, which I'm jotting down some notes for the script, um, it would be about like um, just like some quick info on jeans, and then and then the meat of that first video will be about um, care for your denims. And yeah, I have two denim jackets, one denim vest, which I do need to color, and um, yeah, I have at least two dozen pairs of jeans. I'm not even joking. <laughs> I'm not even joking, and I've just added to them uh, this month. It's been... I haven't gotten myself a new pair of jeans since... Um, since Convergence last year in Detroit. So that was... That was... I enjoyed it. Everybody who went had a great time. It's just there were some aspects of the convention that were not as well executed as they should have been. Let's just put it that way. I have a Convergence review video that I should link in the description box. If I forget to, somebody yell at me in the comments to remind me that I did a stupid again. Um, so yeah, I got a pair of jeans then. That was like, 
my last pair of new jeans. Um, yeah, yeah, because I've gotten a, a couple thrifted pairs. I've gotten a couple thrifted pairs. I got a bunch of white thrifted pairs last time I was at Value World with my friend Elise, and uh, I dyed one of them so far. That would be the cheetah print that are now hyacinth. Um, and I did a jeans load last night in the laundry, so uh, for those of you who did not notice the community post, this is how they turned out the cheetah print. The, um, the thread is still white, that's common because the thread is probably uh, poly nylon blend, if not just straight up polyester or nylon. Uh, there is some patchiness here and there, but I like it. And yes, I said I did a load of jeans. And if you've talked to me on Instagram about my jeans, uh, especially one of y'all who likes to hit up my Instagram DMs every so often, uh, I will go on about how you do not throw jeans in the laundry, but I will save that for the video. Um, there are reasons for this, and I will get to that in the video, but, you know. Uh, so, yeah, this... She took the sticker off, but I, uh... I ended up with these, uh... So this was not the price I paid. I paid $20. They were on sale for $20. So... My jeans from Hot Pocket. And yes, I said Hot Pocket. I intentionally did that this time. Uh, I know one of my last live streams, a couple of you were having a giggle at me. It's just, this is like the kind of like aging elder goth snob I can be. It's like, yeah, I'll go there every once in a while. Um, in part lately, like, or at least in no small part, because, um, I don't know, I've known a bunch of people who worked at the one at the Briarwood Mall, and they're all good kids. Actually, I think the I think the girl who checked me out um, on Saturday was I was out there. But yeah, the girl who checked me out uh, from the Hot Topic on Saturday. I think she's about my age, but, you know, she looks so young. And, um, so, yeah, I go there, and I just kind of rag on the place, because you have to, right? Uh, these, I did not even get this month. I did not even get these this month. Jeans are why I'm broke this month. Uh, these I got last month and just have not taken them out of the bags yet. Uh, because I picked them up for projects. And I figure, you know what, I didn't show them off like I hoped to, so... Okay, so these are uh, UV Diamond Quartz that were actually held on to me for a bit longer. Like, these were actually held on to me until August when I came to pick them up. So these are UV reactive, and these are going to go on that wand with that piece of opal in geode, I believe, that I'm going to be making. And this is just... So it's got these little bits in there that are UV reactive, and I don't have a black light on me right now. If I did, I would show it off so hard. Um, I could probably stand to get one. At the I saved the thing to help me remember which is which. So, let's see, we've got a Dragon Blood Jasper. I know exactly. This is not going on the wand. This is just, um, thing for my thing. This one would be, I believe this is the one that they're calling, uh, Rainbow Moonstone, which makes sense, because it's also loose. Oh, yep and the diamond quartz. And the reason that the quartz was on hold is because, uh, yeah, this, let, 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 let's take a look at how much that UV reactive quartz cost me. So there's a reason this was held for me. And this is why I was broke last month. Um, and this is a small piece of bismuth. Now bismuth is not, it doesn't naturally occur in crystal form. Um, obviously it's metallic. Uh, but it can, um, it's got something to do with, um, the amount of heat applied to it that it will crystallize and form these, and form these very, very intricate kinds of crystals. So, seriously? No. This is not the same car alarm that was going off the... Day I got home from surgery. That was nuts. That was nuts. I was woken up at like 8 a.m. by a car alarm that seriously went on for two hours. 
my first full day home from surgery. That was nuts. I, I literally just gotten home from surgery the night before, and I'm woken up at 8 a.m. I've been asleep for like maybe five hours, and it's car alarm, and it goes for two hours. And because the car was an authorized resident, you know, like it belongs to a resident of the building who was apparently not home, you know, like the police were just like, well, we can't really tow it since so somebody who lives. I'm like, bullshit. Yeah, you know, like that's one of the few reasons, that's one of the few times I've called the police for any reason in the last 15 years. And that's because it was a nuisance car alarm. But and still, they and they still refuse to do anything about it. Oh, I guarantee you, if I lived in downtown Ann Arbor instead of downtown Ipsy, they would have done something about it. But pfft, screw it, Ipsy, right? I'm going to find the owner of this car and harm them. So yeah, I uh, at Even Stars Chalice, I picked up a Celtic blend of incense resin. Oh, now it goes off. Now it ends. Now it ends! Ah, uh, you know what, I'm not gonna repeat myself about the thing. I'm not completely sure what all, um, resins are in here. When I smell it, I'm pretty sure there is some frankincense in here, but I don't know what all the other bits are, so... But, it's nice to have different incenses for different things. This was a candle, so... Just got a little uh, votive light, and now I got another gift. And I know from the comments this was uh, the oh uh, brain fart, brain fart. Please, oh hey, there's a thing in here that'll tell me from who. Oh, Kristen, ordered by Kristen J L, and that is indeed the, uh, that's what's on here, is just like her last initials. Uh, another, uh, enjoy your gift from Kristen, and we have a Subway gift card. Add it through the app. Well, I probably will because I have an app for now. Come here. You want to go get the thing from the bag? No. Well, it's just Subway coupons. They were in the, um, they were in the mailbox on the front of the building for me. Um, that's about all that comes here is that comes to the building because of the uh did I mention this in a previous in a, another video? Oh god, I think I the one that I've already posted, I don't know. But there are goddamn this it it's white boys. It's white boys stealing people's mail. Every time it gets every time a video of it gets posted to the to the um Epsilani group that I'm in on Facebook. If some, you know, every time somebody posts, you know, uh, the the video that they take, you know, from their own little surveillance cameras they rigged up of people stealing mail, it's always white boys. It's always hipster white boys. Usually with hipster facial hair, but not necessarily always. But still, it's always white boys stealing. And my neighbors in the building, like the one, like the other long-term tenants like myself, um, are... Most of them, most of the other long-term tenants in this building um, are African-American. And I'm just fine with them. We get along just fine. And by get along, I mean, like, you know, they mind their business, I mind mine. You know, we say hi to each other a lot. There's this one older guy. Um, oh, wait. Yeah, there's also the guy on the first floor, like, directly down from me. Um... Uh, Paul, I believe, he does karaoke nights at a couple of local bars in the area, and he's cool. He's cool. Um, his, uh, his girlfriend was black for a while. At least I think they were. I don't know. It was one of those weird situations where I think he was more into her than she was into him, but that's okay. It happens every once in a while. I, I, I've been friendly with her. Uh, I haven't talked to her in a while, though. But yeah, the, uh, the guy directly downstairs from me, um, I don't know how many people <laughs> I don't know how many people officially live there, uh, but I do know he's got some friends who've been in and out, um, periodically, like, sometimes for a few months at a time, um, so I'm sure he's just, like, one of those 
friends that, like my dad was, where, you know, somebody ends up in a sorry spot and he's the friend that they can all rely on. So yeah, I, uh, he also walks with a cane. I see him periodically, but yeah, he's a, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know if it was him or one of his friends that, uh, you know, like right downstairs from me, they're smoking grass on the, on the porch, or not porch, balcony, whatever. Um, I know on the first floor it's more like a porch, but, and I was thinking of, I was just talking about Paul on the first floor, but I think it's Paul. But yeah, uh, so yeah, the guy's downstairs, and this is during the, uh, the 2016, uh, presidential election, so I'd been here a couple years, uh, about a year and a half or so, but yeah, I'd been here, and they were downstairs talking about the, uh, the Democratic candidates. This was before they narrowed it down to, to Hillary, and, uh, and this, and this guy downstairs smoking grass. Like I said, I don't know if it's the guy who's been here the whole time. I have, probably longer, um, or if it was one of his friends. But you can you can smell it. You can smell it. Like I was in the apartment, you know, just like with the windows open and the door open to the, the door to the balcony open, like it often is when the weather's nice. Just because screen door and the cats, uh, I don't know. He tried to climb it a couple weeks ago, and I yelled at him, and he stopped. But they know not to climb the screen window, or the screen door for the most part. Yes, you, little mister, talking about you. But, um, but yeah, they're, they're smoking grass on the balcony to the point where I can smell it inside. Wait, did I even have the window? I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. I could smell it. I could smell it. I could very clearly smell it. I might have been getting a contact buzz from smelling it. That's the only time weed affects me, is like when other people are smoking it and I'm inhaling the secondhand smoke, that's the only time I get a little bit mellowed out from it. So that's like, I don't know, that's why I don't smoke it, because I'm like, I, I get more from somebody else's secondhand stuff than I do from smoking it myself. And honestly, it, it's just like, I don't know. But yeah, they're, they're smoking down on the porch. So this was, like I said, 2016 election cycle. So this was even before it was um, recreationally legal in Michigan. They've got some weird nonsense going on with how one goes about accumulating it now that it's recreationally legal. It, it, it's, I don't know. I haven't been keeping up with it, but it's like, hey, at least now, you know, it's official because nobody was really there are certain doctors who will just, like, give out a medical marijuana card for any or no reason. But, um, that's another story for another time. So, yeah, they're smoking down on the balcony, um, downstairs from me. And I'm hearing one of them. Like I said, I don't know if it's my official neighbor or if it was one of his friends. And he's going on about how, yeah, Bernie's gangster, man. You know Bernie's gangster. He's gonna be gangster. He's gonna clean all this shit up. Like, Hil Hillary's gangster, too, but she, you know... She's not gangster like Bernie's gangster. A couple minutes going on, going on about about Sanders, and then he's like, uh, and then he's like, but Trump, Trump don't know nothing about being gangster, man. I'll get I'll get him in a room with Bernie and Hills. Oh man, he's gonna know gangster then. <laughs> like, oh my God. And I'm thinking to myself, and then I'm thinking to myself, like listening to this. Why am I not sampling this? I should be sampling this for some reason. What for? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I could have just put it on a podcast later, you know? Oh my god, yeah. I'm, I was like listening to a Cheech and Chong routine downstairs from me, and I didn't have to pay Cheech and Chong prices for it. This is something that they would have done. I can see this. Oh my gosh, I've given them, like, million dollar idea right there. Right there, Cheech Marin. Million dollar idea, Cheech Marin, Tommy Chong, somebody. Like, million dollar idea. Pay me for this. You now have to pay me for this. If you do it later, if you end up going on tour, guys, and and something, this is now evidence that you know that if you use that, it was my idea. Actually, it was my neighbor's idea, but <laughs> well, no, it was my neighbor's rant, and then my idea to turn it into a Cheech and Chong routine. So there you go, million dollar idea. If you use it, I'm gonna sue. Ah. <laughs> uh. I could if I would, but, or I would if I could, I don't know, I don't know. I could if I would, wait, that, yeah, I got that mixed up, but, uh, I don't know, that's about all I want to share, show off right now of various crap and stuff, 
and now you've got like a very, very tiny um, tidbit, I guess, of what it's like living in this building. But yeah, my neighbors in the building, they're fine. I get along fine with them. Um, yeah, there's this little family like across the hall from me. Um, her dad is over a lot, and he's, I'm pretty sure he's an alcoholic. <laughs> um, but no, she's, she's fine, the woman's fine, the kids are fine. I've seen, I've seen these kids practically grow up. I know one of them was definitely about a foot shorter when they moved in three, maybe four years ago. Yeah, it was shortly after I renewed my lease here for the first year that they moved in, maybe about a month later, so... Uh, so yeah, they've been here about four years, I've been here five this month, and yeah, yeah, this, I, I know, at least, I know one of these kids was a good foot shorter <laughs> than he is now when I first moved in, and, oh, that's right, she's still here too, yeah, there's this, uh, there's this, uh, there's this family with this little girl on, a, well, she's not so little anymore, she's, again, about a foot taller than she was when I moved in, yeah, they've been here at at least some months, you know, because everybody's lease is different. And, uh, and she was being really curious when, um, when my friends, uh, John and Jimmy and, oh yeah, yeah, and Ronnie, uh, yeah, she was, she was here too, yeah, she helped us, um, yeah, yeah, John and Ronnie were dating at the time, I don't know if they still are, I know they were cute together, but that doesn't mean it's gonna last forever, but yeah, um, but yeah, she was really curious and asking, you know, um, like, what all stuff I, you know. You know, it wasn't anything that sounded suspicious. She was just, like, asking, like, because I had a couple things that were loose, and I, you know, just saying, yeah, I, you know, collect antiques. I'm a DJ and a uh, musician, so that's what all these musical instruments are about and stuff. And so, uh, so yeah, um... And she's, yeah, she, she had to have been like nine or ten when I moved in here. I don't remember how old, I, I don't remember if I asked, but, uh, but yeah, I know that, you know, she was, a um, but yeah, she's, she's like 15 now. Like I said, there's this one of the three kids across the hall. I think one has moved out on his own because I haven't seen them for a while. Um, I haven't seen them for a while. I think they moved out because I know they, I know as a, let's see, when Isaac and I first started hanging, hanging together, um, yeah, they were, uh, they were across the hall, and I think they were like 18, maybe 19, so yeah, that was two years ago, so I think they moved out, I think they moved out onto their own, and, um, so yeah, like, one of them, the young, one of the younger two, because there's at least three, uh, so yeah, one of the younger two is definitely a foot taller than he was when they first moved in. The other one has gotten a bit taller as well. I'm not, not quite a foot taller for the last four years. But yeah, they're fine. And like I said, the little girl on the first floor, she's fine. I don't know if I've seen much of her family. Oh yeah, and there's this other woman on the second floor, uh, also African American, and she lives with her daughter. And she's often out walking her Pomeranian. And I love this Pomeranian. <laughs> <laughs> this palm is like one of those dogs that, uh, that, that just, like, you could tell this dog has, ha, ha, has her own little attitude. Uh, you can tell this little dog has an attitude. And actually, like, it was kind of funny. It was kind of funny. Like, the first time I met her, she, um, you know, she's out walking, and I say hi, I introduce myself, and, you know, as I'm coming out, and she's coming back in from walking the dog, and the little dog, the little palm, comes right up to me and, you know, is, you know, greeting me and the, and the woman, she says, um, oh, wow, she, uh, th this one only usually likes men. I'm like, that's, yeah, that's, that's about right. <laughs> I think I made a gesture at my, at my, uh, five o'clock shadow and she's like, I'm like, no, that's about right. You know, pitched down just a little bit. And, uh, she's like, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're, you're, you're one of those, I'm like, no, it's okay, and, like, show off the princess. She's like, oh, yeah, I should have known. <laughs> so, yeah, that was, that was funny. That was funny. Uh, 
Oh, she usually only likes men. Yeah, that's 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 about right. <laughs> but yeah, so I don't know. That's about it. I've been rambling on a bit much. I will I actually really like my neighbors, but like I said, I trust them. I trust them. They like I mind my business. They, they mind theirs. Oh, oh gosh, yeah. I know one of the one of the friends. I believe of uh, the guy directly downstairs from me. He's referred to me as ah. Uh, let's see. For a uh, YouTube-friendly version, the fairy <laughs> upstairs. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, only he didn't say fairy. He said the other F1. One of the other guys who I see there a lot, um, he's just like, Ah, oh, man, that guy's cool. That guy's cool. Just, just leave him be. Don't, don't be an asshole, man. He's just, he minds his own business. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, I, I'm I'm the fairy upstairs. That's I don't know. Oh, maybe I should put that on my wreath on the door. <laughs> the fairy lives here. Oh, it's also funny. There's this little yeah. I'll save that one for the tour. Oh god, it's cat crazy time, and yeah, it's gonna be cat dinner time in an hour. All right, I need to figure out how much of this I'm gonna cut out. But yeah. Uh, wear sunscreen, floss after you brush your teeth, and, um, if, uh, if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to hit the thumbs up. If you did not enjoy it, hit the thumbs down. Or maybe if you, or maybe it's opposite day where you are at, and if you liked it, hit the thumbs down, but if you didn't, hit the thumbs up. Uh, subscribe if you want to subscribe, that would be nice. Uh, if you really enjoyed it, you can love me with money. There's a PayPal tip jar. If you have more dollars than cents, there's also Patreon. Uh, um, as far as, um, why the Amazon, um, not the Amazon gift card. It's pay, uh, Subway gift card from Amazon. Uh, yeah, my food stamps got borked up, so that's the default Amazon wish list right now that is in the description box. If you want to send me another case full of almond milk or maybe these uh these these um bread dough mixes like pre-mixed dough but I um uh, or at least pre-mixed dry ingredients. I gotta add the wet ingredients. But that's on there. There's also gift cards for like Whole Foods and Oh, that's right. They don't have them to Kroger. But if you do have a, if you do, if you can get a gift card to Kroger or Fresh Time Farmers Market or Trader Joe's, there's also a uh, PO box you can just send it to. Um, from uh, you know, like there's an address for a PO box if you've got a Kroger, uh, yeah, Kroger Fresh Time Farmers Market or Trader Joe's. If you're also in Michigan, I will accept Meyer. But I like to avoid Meyer because it is very difficult to get in and out of Meyer in under 15 minutes. And sometimes I just need to get in and out in under 15 minutes. And even if I'm doing a targeted strike, it always takes at least 20 minutes to get in and out of Meyer, which just flummoxes me. And it's not all about the size of the store either. But that's another rant for another time. But yeah, like, if that's what you got, that's what you got. Um, or at least if that's what you want to give, that's what you can. Uh, um, but yeah, my food stamps got all borked up. I got to talk to my caseworker this Let's see. Oh, that's right. I gotta make brownies for game night tomorrow. No, not special brownies. Um, regular brownies. Uh, because why? I have brownie mix. That's, and, like, I either bring extra games or I bring snacks. I'm probably gonna bring both this week. But that's not exactly relevant. But yeah, for some reason, my food stamps allowance got borked up. I don't know exactly why probably some combination of, uh, of 45 in the White House and the fact that uh, we ha Michigan had a ding-dang libertarian governor for quite some years. Fucking Snyder, I swear. Hi! And there goes any kind of monetization. Uh, let's see, let's see. Um, I don't know. You know what? I think... Uh, if I can remember to, I might throw some Amazon affiliate links for the books I picked up for free in the description box. And if you want to get th your own copies that way, I'll get like five cents that 
Amazon will eventually pay for me after it accumulates to, I think, like a $20 minimum. I don't know. Whatever. I gotta go look for my gift card, which was literally just right here. It was just right here. I put it here. And now it has evaporated. I'll figure it out. Right, Kitty? Right, Kitty? But, yeah. Um, all that happy horror... Oh, no, no, no. Oh. oh. Okay, fine. You want to go play? Kitty wants to play. He wants to. He wants to. He really does. But he's so cute. Mwah. Love him. Even though he's weird. Yeah. Oh, Nigel's watching me. Oh, oh, now you, now you want to... He loves this. I don't know why, but he loves this. I had another cat who loved this. That was Vermin. That's another story for another time. But, uh, yeah, uh, like, subscribe, tip jar if you want to. I'm not expecting it. Amazon wishlist foods if you want to. Again, not exactly expecting it, but it would be nice. I'll give you a shout-out, maybe. I don't know. Something. Um, what else? Yeah, like, go check out books. Um, and if, uh, and all of that, and bats and kisses, and take care of yourselves, and good, oh, kitty, and your kitties, and goodbye!